As an inventor, I have two great inspirations. Leonardo da Vinci and my uncle Arthur. Shrimp, this new improved toaster will change toast as we know it. Arthur, I only want a toaster that toasts. A toaster that just toasts. What we have here more is tomorrow's toast today. I just really want today's toast for today's breakfast, if you can manage it. How does it work? Simplicity itself. The toast is loaded in the toasterator where it is toasted. Then it goes into the butterization unit. Then into the jammatron and onto the plate, ready to be eaten. Amazing! Try it, Seamus. Well, you're right. This is the future of toast. Wait, <laughs> what's going wrong? Yeah, I guess I'd say everything. The jam corner is going critical. Stuck in cover. <laughs> Who would have thought that jam could be so unstable? Tracy, what's that on your head? <gasps> what is it? Is it a toupee? No, it can't be. It is. I thought I had finally lost that thing for good years ago. But you found it. The toupee of Bald Bob. Who's Bald Bob? And why is his toupee here? It's a blood-curdling horror story that will leave you cold and clammy with fear and dread and give you nightmares for weeks to come. <laughs> You'll love it. Bald Bob was a magician. A really bad one. Buttons. Buttons. Where are you, Buttons? <laughs> <laughs> you know how magicians hide things up their sleeves? Well, Bald Bob used to hide things under his toupee. Chirpy, come back! Chirpy! <laughs> he was very entertaining. <laughs> but for all the wrong reasons... Bald Bob got so depressed at being laughed at that he retired from magic and hung up his toupee. He wanted to run far away, as far away as he could. Where did he go? The Himalayas. <gasps> the Himalayas? What happened then? They say he met a Yeti. <laughs> was the last anyone ever heard of Bald Bob. That's terrible. But what do we do with this? Legend says that one day the ghost of Bald Bob will return to reclaim his toupee. When? The first full moon after the discovery of the toupee. That means tonight! Yeah! Is that really true, Uncle Arthur? Uncle Arthur? This is the perfect opportunity for a ghost hunt. Do you believe in ghosts, Tracy? No, of course not. Then why are we hunting for one? All phantasmic phenomena should be investigated scientifically and disproved. This is our chance to do it. This movement detector is able to pick up any atmospheric vibrations caused by the movements of human, animal or ghost. Do we have to do this? You don't believe in ghosts, do you? No, but that doesn't mean I'm not scared of them. That night, we set ourselves up in Uncle Arthur and Aunt Maud's spare room. If anything makes a move to get Bald Bob's toupee, there's no way we'll miss it, ghost or no ghost. Please make it no ghost. Now we just have to wait. Disappeared. 
Hmm, whatever or whoever it was is gone. What will we do now? We'll have to come back tomorrow night. Tomorrow night? That's right. It's sure to come back. It wants the toupee. I don't like repeating myself, Tracy. Do we have to? We don't have to, but we've got to. It's for science, Seamus. <laughs> Are you sure you're going to be comfortable in here, Shrimp? No worries, Uncle Arthur. We're doing it for science. Hey, why don't you join us tonight, Uncle Arthur? No way, Shrimp. You're on your own with this one. Will the ghost of Bald Bob really come back? As long as we have the toupee, it'll be back. Or something will be back. That's very spooky. Oh, it's only the wind. Nothing to worry about. And that's even spookier. Uh, that's the filament of the incandescent light bulb finally decaying and giving out. It happens to all light bulbs. And we do have torches for just such an emergency. And that noise, that's the spookiest of them all. Oh, that's just the movement detector. It means something's coming. Something's coming! It's close. A little too close. <laughs> Hit the lights! <gasps> Come on, we can't lose it again. Yes, yes we can. Whatever that was, it was not a ghost. So, so what was it? That's what we've got to find out. Let's go, Seamus, quickly! <laughs> oh, I've lost the signal. Good. Uh, bad. What a shame. <laughs> what was that? This is getting so good. Why? First a ghost. Now we might have a werewolf. <laughs> werewolf. Well, something like a werewolf, and for which there must be a definite scientific explanation. Oh, I've got a signal! It's back at the shed! <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! Aunt Maud! Tracy, you gave me such a fright. Well, what are you doing? I'm fixing this so I can finally have my morning toast. I tried to do it last night. So that was you last night? Please don't tell Arthur I'm doing this. He'd be so upset if he thinks I believe his inventions are silly. But, Aunt Maud, you do think his inventions are silly? Oh, yes, but he doesn't have to know it. Sleep tight now, and remember, not a word to your uncle. If the ghost last night was Aunt Maud, then who did we see tonight? And what was that sound we heard? Seamus, it's time we give up chasing this ghost or werewolf or whatever he is. Really? Oh, we'll stop chasing him. We will, because now it's time to set a trap. <laughs> Here's the bait. This time we'll get to the bottom of things. Tracy, isn't this trap a little, um, obvious? Ah, it couldn't be more obvious. That's the point. It is? <laughs> Bald Bob will see the obvious trap. He'll try and avoid it by climbing the tree, going out onto the branch and reaching down for the toupee. What he doesn't know is that he'll trip these laser beams and set off the real trap. Let's hide in the shed and wait. How long do you think we'll have to wait? No time at all, Seamus! Aha! We've got you now, Bob Bob! Come on out! Now, now, talk to her. Is that a nice way to behave? <laughs> Hello there, my name's Bob. You've already met my friend Tuktawa. Uh, my name is... What's my name? Um, uh, right, uh, Tracy. Yeah. Uh, I'm, uh, uh it's, it's Seamus, right? <clears throat> so you're the pair who's been giving us so much trouble. Oh, well, we didn't mean to. <laughs> We're sorry, really. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you come back to our camper van and have some hot chocolate with us? We went back to Bald Bob's camper van, and Bald Bob told us what happened in the Himalayas. He was sheltering in a cave when the furious Yeti took to her, confronted him. <coughs> but the Yeti was only angry because of a thorn in his foot. <coughs> and they soon became best friends. So, why have you come back, Bob? It was time to show Tuktawa the world. And time to return to magic. is going to be my assistant. But I'll never be confident enough to do magic without my toupee. Now, that's better. Where are you? Buttons? Oh, there you are. Glad to have you back, old friend. I think you'll do great, Bob.
Take it from us, you're going to be a hit. You think so? Oh, we know so. And we've got your first performance all planned. <laughs> Seamus and I were right. They were a hit. It wasn't that their magic was any good. It was as bad as bad can be. It was all because of Tuktua. People love seeing a real live yeti work as a magician's assistant. Chirpy, stop that. So if you ever hear of a magic act starring Bald Bob and a yeti, make sure you go to see them. They're one fantastic act. Ta -da!